You're listening to the Beyond Sunday podcast, where faith journeys extend beyond the Sunday sermon. Join Pastor Jeff Carlson and guests as they dive deeper into spiritual topics, offering insights and reflections that resonate with believers from all walks of life. Join us for enriching conversations in faith, life, and community. This is Beyond Sunday. Hey, everybody. Welcome to season two. woo <laughs> I thought you'd be more excited about it. Did you that, have a, that was that was my excited look. That, that was that, is, that was it that's as far as you go. That was it. Yeah, I was louder than you, I guess. <laughs> uh, did you well, have a you, nice hiatus? Uh, it made me kind of nervous that we weren't putting these together. Oh, you know, I've had a number of people ask me like, when when did the podcast come back? So there's yeah. like at least eight or ten people that yeah. listen. <laughs> this 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 is the only fame I've got. <laughs> this is it. Well, this is quite minimal. <laughs> Of the fame, uh, but yeah, we've had a lot of fun, and and uh, you know, we'll see where we go uh, this time around. I know we've got some 40th anniversary episodes coming out next week and the week after, um, as we look forward to that. Yeah. And uh, you've been here for a long, a I've long been here half, half of that, isn't that yeah. something? I can't believe it. Yeah. I got old, you're an old timer, <laughs> yeah. I was your age when I came here. Wow. <laughs> wow, no, you're gonna t- you were younger than me. Even younger. Just yeah. a, just a couple of years. And you and Liz just celebrated your fortieth, forty third anniversary. Yeah, anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank I'm you. surprised she's put up with you this time. You know Are you? She usually doesn't joke about stuff, but when I said something about our forty third anniversary, she goes, Well, I'm a survivor. <laughs> she's endured. <laughs> she's endured. We're, we're gonna talk about endurance in this episode. And and Liz is a great example. Look there you her. go. She's endured. So is my wife. Not quite as long as, as if you, you're but. if you're watching or listening, don't tell my wife that we <laughs> mentioned that. Does Lizzie not listen to us? She does sometimes, yeah. You know, actually. Well, Lizzie, we love you. Congratulations on Putting up with Zach <laughs> for that long. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we do want to uh, kick off our season. One of the things I have always felt um, missing, I guess, in the church, but especially since 2020 in the American church, Western church, was this, because we're so focused on the good things about God. We sing about the good things of God, which we should. I'm not saying we shouldn't. The goodness of God, all his blessings. And so when we go through a season where Maybe the the goodness of God, the blessings of God are less obvious in our life. Let's say it that way. Or maybe we're in a season where God doesn't seem to be speaking to us. You know, he's he's not saying, I don't believe God is ever silent, but we feel like he's silent. Uh, so often that's when a Christian, uh, you know, questions their faith and, and where's God and what's God doing and what's happening. And I've always thought that was a real problem in the Western church. Uh, but especially since 2020, uh, I think it was a real problem. I think, it's, I think it's exacerbated that problem. And I think, frankly, looking forward to whatever's coming with this election and in, in the next year or two, uh, and maybe we'll do a episode on the election and just whatever. But I just feel like Christians. One of the, one of my mandates is we have to we have to create Christians or disciple Christians who can endure, who can persevere, right? Who can will not shrink back. You know, Hebrew says we will, we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed. And I think the Bible's clear as the the season and times go on, you know, there's going to be a lot more opportunity maybe to give up and and just be like, you know, this isn't this isn't worth it. So what do you think? Why do you think it's difficult in these you know, we're looking at just the difficult moments in our lives. But what happened? What about Christians around the world that are looking at difficult? That their their whole life is a testing, a suffering. Their their government is against them. You know, they have to work hard to just eke out a living or an existence, yeah. whatever. Uh, and you know, we cry and whine if you know we don't have enough money to go to Starbucks in a week. Uh, well, but I, and I think that's what it is. We equate the goodness of God. I could easily say, well, if, have I got money on my yeah. Starbucks card today? Yeah. And so if I don't, well, why does God hate me? Yeah. <laughs> so, so really, th- this goes to, are we criticizing the character of God over trivial things? Because one of the things I've noticed is we have a thing in church will say, well, God is good. And the answer is all the, all time. the time, all the time. And that's true. God is good. And we're sitting in church with our church coffee yeah. and the band is playing. It's easy to say that in our and society. It's wonderful. Now I, I go to the hospital, right? And I'm at a bedside of somebody who's 
going through pain and suffering and fear and yeah. doubt. And is God not good then? Right. No, God is right. good. What do you say? All the time. Right. Right. So it's a lot easier to say if you're sitting here in church. But what if you are in a country where Christians are yeah. persecuted? Yeah. Is God still good? Yeah. That's the that's and the I question. Think, How do we rate I God's think it's, goodness? It's not a question of his character as much as it's a question of our character. And it is that too. Uh, yeah. I, just, I just have a friend that... Uh, has been battling cancer, not in our church, just a, f- a peripheral friend. And, and you know, they just went back at, after doing chemo or whatever, went back for their CT scan. How's it mm-hmm. going? Yeah. yeah how you pre- and and the, res- the, the results are not good. They're, you know, like it looks like it's maybe terminal, you know, whatever. Uh, and in, you know, my friend's sort of like <laughs> Facebook official announcement of, you know, what's going on in his life. What he said was, you know, no matter how this turns out, God is good. God is faithful. Yeah. God has been good to me. He's been faithful to me. He's been faithful to my family, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't mean blah, 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 like trivial. I just mean right. said th- I think things our, like that. Our endurance or perseverance in these things is directly related to to God's faithfulness. Okay. God, does God, ev- and immutability, does God ever change? In his attitude, yeah. in his character, uh, his love never fails. His mercy never comes in. And we can go through the list of, of his faithfulness. Mm-hmm. And our faith is in that, not in my present circumstances. It's something that we heard in church recently of of we, we assess what God will do in the future based on what he's done in the past. So if God has shown us in the past... That he's faithful. He didn't stop being faithful. If God has shown us that he's caring, he's, he doesn't stop being caring just because our situation and circumstances look like yeah. what, what's happening. Yeah. What do you what do you say to people that are questioning that though? Maybe, maybe in your your chaplaincy job, you know, you you run across someone who's uh been faithful to the Lord and served the Lord all their life, love the Lord, whatever, and now they're in this position, but they're struggling with that and they're questioning. What what is your rabbinical wisdom about that would be <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do that. I know. Um I asked them questions about God to see what they really believe about God's character because generally they will they will say what they really believe down their heart. Do, I I know you have yeah. uh this illness, this sickness, this pain. Does this change God? Yeah. Do you think God's grace has changed in any way? And I begin to just draw out those kind of questions. What's changed about God's grace, about his love towards you? Just, does God still, what do you think about Jesus? Do, you know, I just yeah. ask them those types of questions. And generally a person will reaffirm all of their faith. Do you see God. their, do you like see their countenance lift? Sometimes. Their spirit lift as they convince themselves, yeah. if you will, of the goodness I, of God? I, sometimes I do. I have seen r- big transformations in someone, yeah. uh, their attitude about what they were going through, yeah. uh, to know God hasn't changed. And th- what this does to me is I can't provide any stability. My, I give everybody one sermon, my 23rd Psalm sermon. Oh. Okay, And in yeah. the 23rd Psalm, we have all these different paths. Right. There's uh, still waters and green pastures and, and the path of righteousness and there's the dark valley and it, it goes on. And on. So to me, that's saying life just keeps changing all around. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have heard me preach this before because I do it over and over. Yeah. Uh, so life keeps changing. But the stabilizer is starts at the beginning. The Lord, he's my shepherd. And it keeps going, and I won't fear any evil because he's with me. Yeah. And it just keeps going all the way. His goodness and mercy follow me every day of my life. And then there's no break between earth and heaven, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The destination is the so, same. So God is the stabilizer so that we can be yeah. perseverant. Yeah. If, if God was whimsical, imagine any any other religion that doesn't have a god with the character that we have and yeah. god might be evil god might be you know he might be selfish yeah. uh, how would you ever deal with that cuz you never know what terrible thing he's going to do to you i found so many people that wrestle with that one of the reasons they do is uh, they're they're stuck in the idea of God responds to our performances, so yeah. how we perform day to day, or how, how you know whatever the level of our faith is, or how much yeah. we pray, or you know I found in my own life like there's been a lot of Sunday mornings I've gotten up and I'm like man, 
I wish I'd prayed more this week, or I wish I'd studied more this week. I wish I'd, I'd feel inadequate. Sometimes or, I wish you did. Well, I, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's legit. Well, I, I, I almost always I'm feel joking. that way. No, no, you're not. But I, I almost always feel that way, regardless of how much I have studied or prayed or prepared, you know, to, to preach. Yeah. Um, but I always have that go through my head as if like the Lord is not going to come into the room because I didn't pray that extra hour. Somehow, you if you earn enough points, if I do it enough, then God will come and be like, "Wow, I'm yeah. really going to come today." <laughs> because, yeah. and I just think God is like not that fragile, and He's not a performance no. God in that way. No. And so the faithful—that's why—that's why I think we can say, you know, as the psalmist wrote, "His faithful love endures forever," and it's not yeah. based on our emotion, or our feeling, or certainly our circumstances. He's His faithful love just yeah. endures. That's either true or it isn't true. There, there's a long argument back and forth on perseverance and if you can even get into theological argument the perseverance of the saints you yeah. know uh, reform theology says oh if you're a saint you will you will persevere yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter you know you can't be lost and then you get the other side where that we say if you are saved you will persevere yeah. so the, the argument uh, they argue against each other that perseverance uh you guys believe that you have to perform it, and the other is saying, right. "Well, you believe that we don't do anything." And neither one is neither exactly right, right because right. they're they're painting a straw man. Right. Usually, both sides know perseverance is our dependence upon the faithful character of God. And are we depend? I mean, and our really, response to that ultimately that going back to Psalm twenty three, ultimately that leads, you know, surely goodness and fall and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. But I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Like perseverance ultimately leads to the house of the Lord forever. And he's not talking about the church building or the temple in Jerusalem at that moment. He's talking about eternity and yeah. being in, in, in the presence of the Lord forever. So when we read, you know, at the end of the book uh, in, in Revelation, and we're reading about the seven churches, over and over, Jesus says to the churches, the one who endures. To the end. The one who perseveres. Yeah. The one who... You know, the idea is the one who makes it through whatever is coming to the world. So many generations of Christians think that we're we're always in Christian decline. You know, there's always a decline in passion and intensity. Like every generation yeah. in the West since I think 17, the early 1700s has said that. So then we have moments like the Great Awakening. We have moments like the Welsh Revival. We have moments uh, like Azusa Street. We have moments. Yeah. Uh, that hearken us back to this intensity with God. But then we always kind of, that wanes, and then we end up kind of back where we are. That's the prevailing thought, philosophy. Uh, so I think the fear of that or the, or the thought behind that is, hey, the world's getting worse and worse and worse. The world is getting more treacherous, not just for believers, but just in general, you know. And I look at where America is today, um, and I know I'm preparing for a, for a hey politics in the Bible this Sunday. You know, you should be there, <laughs> no, September first. Um, so I'm preparing for that. So I look at where America is and where America's in decline as a society and as a nation, and I can't help but think, you know, for the church, for Christians, it's going to get worse. And the Bible's speaking, you know, Jesus is speaking in Revelation to these churches, saying it's going to get worse. You know, it's going to get bad. This is after, I mean, think about when uh, John is writing these words of Jesus to the church. It's after Nero. It's after the great persecutions in, in Rome. Uh, it's, uh, or at least in the middle of them. So it's already really, really bad and way worse than it is for us. But if those things were to come to America, what are a couple of things you would say, or to the Western church, what would you, or a couple of things you would say, okay, if you're going to endure to the end, if you're going to receive the crown of life, you know, Jesus is like, your name's in my book, you know, you're going to come be right, you know, all these great yeah. things he promises to those that endure. What are a couple, <clears throat> what are a couple of things you would say believers have got to do X, Y, Z in order to endure to the end? I, I think of the parable of the sower, and the, the one seed fell on soil that that just couldn't get any roots down. Yeah. So we we have to definitely have just roots, roots. Uh, okay. or we will spring up and then die off. Okay. And uh, so, what does that mean? Roots roots have to do with stability. So uh, I guess we have to have 
the, what I mentioned earlier was we have to have this view of the character of God. He is holy. He's blameless. He's perfect. And uh, we can't say we have to get the out of our idea that that my personal happiness mm. is any is mm. any reflection of God's goodness at all. I can be unhappy, and God is still good, even if I don't yeah. get my Starbucks. I've lived there before. You know. And there are people. We've got to get that out of our mind that my my personal gratification really doesn't have anything to do with the goodness of God. Yeah. And so, if I'm going to trust in the goodness of God, obviously we need to dig deep. Um, uh, digging deep to me is um, our devotional life. Of yeah. course, yeah. it's going to be so so spending important. time with the Lord. Yeah, I would say part of that is being part of the body of Christ, being committed. Yeah. And in a together relationship, it's the idea, you know, what I don't remember what the trees are that that grow really, really, really big and tall, but their roots are all intertangled. And yeah. so the strength is not in the individual tree. The strength is in the yeah. root. I think pine trees tend to do that. Yeah. They I, think it's sequoias. Deep. I think yeah. it's the sequoias of the giant redwoods, one of those two, that their roots just get so interlocked with one another as they grow that the strength is not in their trunk or their individual roots because they're actually quite shallow, but it is in how they are connected to one yeah. another. And I think that's true with the with the church, like being connected to the church. So like this, this uh, unnecessarily distancing yourself from the church by watching online, which is yeah. something we created in 2020. I never, and I don't think I've ever said this from the pulpit, but I mean, just to be honest, it's kind of nonsense as far as the way the Bible would view biblical Christianity and the ability to endure as a body, as a collective. Well, we, we, we've worked all our lives, Jeff, to get people to be convinced that church is not a Sunday morning program right. inside of a building. Right. Uh, a church is your whole network of relationship with those people that you are supporting and they're supporting yes. you in in prayer mm -hmm. and in fellowship. And it can't it doesn't happen on Sunday morning. I've said this over and over, and I'm sorry if it offends you, but coming into a church service and sitting down and listening to a band and listening to you preach, that isn't really no, the I, end of church. That's I not the agree. goal of it. And that's not the end. And I do agree. I do. It's very important. I think it's very important. But then again, being a chaplain, I visit people, they can never be in a church yeah. service. Yeah. And so many of them will say, yeah, but I've been watching this streaming yeah. uh, and they'll name different, different ones that they listen to yeah. and stream. So, well, I think if you, if that's the way you have to do it, great. But here's what I would say is that, that, that street of connected to the body goes both ways, right? So, yeah. so not only if you're able to to bodily be part of the body, no pun intended, you need to. But if you're not, then that body yeah. needs to be active in supporting you and coming to right. you, you not should, just in sermons. You need to be on the foot in relationship. You need to be having coffee yeah. together. You I need think, to be having a time where you talk with yeah. one another. And it can't just all be done on Sunday morning because we're not it talking can. together. It can't. And, and I think that the church, because our lives have become so busy in the Western culture, that it, that's hard to do. When somebody is not present, they are often out of sight, out of mind. And not intentionally. It's not like anybody's trying to do that. It just It's just how it works. Uh, because of the nature of our society. Yeah. But I think that's part of it. And this isn't about it. This isn't a podcast about come to church, although I think people should. Well, it's about but endurance. I it, and that it I, is. I believe God puts people into our lives on purpose. Here's one thing to think we about. We have to have them. That church, the churches in Revelation. Jesus spoke to churches, not individuals. Right, he's speaking to the body of believers in those places. Yeah. Where church means an assembly of assembly people. of people. So it's a the, he's speaking to a group of people in Ephesus or Pergamum or wherever. Yeah, uh, he wasn't speaking to he didn't write it or say it to an individual person. Right. So I think those in the end of this thing, whenever that happens, who are connected into a body, whatever that might look like, be it be a community be of believers to endure. And this and this crosses denominational lines as well. Yes, I have good friends yeah. that have a Baptist tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, now I've got friends that have Catholic tradition. Yeah. <laughs> that is a yeah. little stretch sometimes, no. but but uh, I think there are some solid Catholic believers in the world. relationship with with people of of like Christian faith. Yeah. That it will help us in our strengthening and our endurance. I think uh, when we think about endurance, we often go first to the spiritual. 
my faith needs to be strong. I need to be sure of what I believe. I need to know the word of God, all of which is, I think is true. But I think that piece of the body of Christ and being connected to brothers and sisters is overlooked or is minimized maybe in that discussion. Yeah. And I think those are, um, you know, two sides of the same coin, if you will, where, where you, you really, you really can't endure one without the other. You need both of those in our lives to truly endure through whatever, even whether it's circumstantial difficulty or whether it's end of the world, you know, apocalyptic stuff that may or may not come, you know, in our lifetime. Uh, I think you have to have both of those things. I don't think you can do one without the other. Yeah. I Don't we have something coming up that's going to help people get connected with each other yeah. as human beings? We've got some life groups that are launching yeah. and uh, so, have, have, have had a few launch this week. Um, I was hoping you'd plug that. Well, I, I, you know, we'll probably do a whole podcast on it, but uh, yeah. And that, and that's honestly one of the main reasons that we changed the formatting from what we were doing, which was more classes and teaching some, some were fellowship, but some were relational in that way, but we didn't see the depth of the relationship and the well, strength it, it, of it. The connect groups weren't designed that right. we were designed to get together for a while Go back into the big body, mix it up, come back as a different group. Right. So we were getting to know people in a much broader way, but not in a more personal not way. Not doing life together, supporting yeah. one another through these things. Yeah. And should uh, you know, the country go haywire at some point, those relationships of depth will be the ones that help people steady be steady. Uh because I can't steady everybody. You know, our pastors can't steady everybody. Our church services certainly can't steady everybody. But those individual relationships, those small groups can yeah. bring strength. Do you remember do you, are you old enough to remember when we used to call each other Brother Jeff oh, yeah. and and some people still call me that. Sister Amy and yeah. and we were actually we were the family of God. Yeah. We really were. We used and to sing the song. We need to, yeah. I'm so glad I'm a part of the Assemblies of God. <laughs> we always said family of God. But... Oh, yeah, family of yeah. God. Um, and I, I think this has to be a kind of a paradigm shift for us, is that we, we stay connected more and more with people. We've got all these social ways to be connected, and we need to just be yeah. connected all week long. So no more no more jumping from Sunday to Sunday with yeah. no connection in between. So the vast majority of Christians across our country and Western Christianity, you know, have a connection to the church, but I would say not really a connection to the body of Christ because they're Sunday morning Christians. Uh, they and, and thinking of the church as a separate entity from right. themselves. Compartmentalizing it's a huge their life mistake. Real, real, yeah. really well. Uh, so you know, they're they're not in small groups, they're not in discipleship, they're not in they're not serving, uh, they're coming to church when it's convenient and easy. And I just, you know, the way I look at it is those are the folks that will have the most difficult time. I believe when it. things get difficult, yeah. whether in their life or in you know, our society or our country or whatever, they're going to have the yeah. worst time. So I'll yeah. give you the last word. It's, well, it, because that's isolation. Yeah. And uh, when we think that God can see all of it, and we just have, we only see just a small part of yeah. it. So God, God's faithfulness is from before we were born all the way past when we die and we end up in the house of the Lord, you know, so he sees this entire picture. So we have to rely upon his character, not upon whether we're satisfied with the exact moment that we're yeah. in. Uh, and that will, I think that's really going to be the key to uh, endurance. Uh, afflictions are in Romans chapter five. Uh, look this up sometime. Romans five, three says, and not only this, but we also boast in our afflictions. In other words, those are they're, they're good for us to so go they, through so difficult they, times. They weren't comparing the blessings of God as much as the afflictions yeah. that they were walking through. Yeah. I, well, but maybe afflictions are a blessing from God mm. because we know that affliction produces patient endurance. And patient endurance, proven character, and proven character, hope, 
And hope does not disappoint yeah. because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Hope is about the future that God yeah. is going to take us to. Where I am right now, today I'm, I'm in a good mood. Maybe tomorrow I'll be in a bad mood. That doesn't matter <laughs> because where I am now, God knows where I need to be and he knows how to get me there. Yeah. And I need to rely upon his yeah. faithfulness. And that's yeah. endurance. If you're in a bad mood tomorrow, it'll matter to Lizzie. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, look forward to a great season and, and having some great discussions with you and probably some guests that come through through the years. So enjoy uh, this session and the few that are coming for our 40th anniversary. And then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming uh, here, in, here in a couple of weeks. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to the Beyond Sunday podcast. We invite you to join the conversation and share your thoughts at connectionpointchurch.org slash beyond Sunday. Spread the word and share this podcast with others. Stay inspired and connected as we explore faith beyond Sunday. Sunday.